Hey guys, Chris Pietzer coming to you from my backyard garden on beautiful Oahu, Hawaii. And today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this hand trommel or hand screener or worm casting separator for your backyard. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a quick demo on how to use the unit. The first thing you're going to do is go to a local home improvement store and pick up some PVC pipe fittings, one inch and one and a quarter inch. Go over and get some pipes, also one inch and one and a quarter inch. Get a couple of buckets, some hardware, a lot of options with buckets. You can go with the cheap ones, you can go with free ones from bakeries. Uh, Walmart's got them for under $3. Uh, lots of options. So bring all that stuff home, break out the tools. You're going to need a couple of saws, maybe a drill, a couple of wire cutters, maybe tin snips, PVC glue. Uh, cut up all the pieces. Uh, I've got a detailed list of everything that you'll need to cut in the description below. Um, and then break out all of the pieces that you brought back from uh, the big big box or home improvement store. And we're going to start with the T. This is where the axle uh, will fit into the frame. There's a couple ways you can do this with a Dremel tool or the more preferred way would be to use a 1 and 3 8 inch hole saw. And I run this in reverse on my drill. Uh, go ahead and, and just go in reverse and then route out the opening and then that will make it go into the fitting a lot easier. Uh, run it through in reverse the whole way uh, up until you get to the stop and you'll see here in the photo uh, there's the before and then the after shows that I maintain that stop and that's where the pipe or the axle will stop inside the frame. You don't want to go beyond that uh, otherwise you'll run into issues with the pipe eventually wearing through that teeth. And now onto the cross, same thing, route out the uh, opening so that the hole saw will center itself. Now one thing to notice on here in the shadow, you'll see my head kind of going back and forth, and that's to make sure that the drill is straight up and down. Drill the rest of it in reverse, all the way through this time on the, on the uh, cross. The T, we only went up to the stop, but the cross, we're going to go all the way through, so take it as far as your hole saw will go, and then flip it over, do the same thing, route out the opening, and then reverse it all the way. In, and that should complete the hole through the entire opening. Moving on to the dry fit portion, we're going to start with the front legs and the pieces we'll be used are on the right of the screen. This is just assembly, this is not gluing. Uh, everything will just be dry fit so that you can see how the entire uh, assembly, the whole framework goes together. Moving on to the back legs, it's the same dry fit process with the exception of the actual feet are bent at an angle and this will make more sense as we get to the uh, chassis portion. Now moving on to the chassis section, we'll build this in halves. Uh, you can see the T and the cross as they will have their place in the chassis. The pieces we'll use are on the right of the screen. I'm going to build the end or the outfeed section in this segment. Uh, again the legs will be pointed up because I have this upside down. Now the infeed side uses the cross and not the T. Again the legs will be pointed up in this part and uh, not out to the side. Or, and then these are the sleeves. These sleeves allow the legs to go in and out of the frame for storage. And I will go back to the infeed side and do the same thing on this where I add the sleeves. These are at an angle for the uh, outfeed side. Now I add the sides of the chassis and you kind of see this kind of take shape. I'm going to add the legs that we had built. Again this is the outfeed side with the bent legs. The bent legs, the angle is determined based on once you have it in the chassis, and then you want that end to be straight up and down. At this point, I would take the legs out, take a pencil and mark this so that when you do the glue step up next, then these will be aligned exactly as they need to be for, the, for your particular chassis. Moving on to the infeed side or the front legs. These will just slip in, and when you glue these, you'll just make sure that everything is flat and straight. The last section is the handle or the axle. This is the beginning phase. 
One thing to note is the sleeve, the one and a quarter inch pipe goes over the one inch pipe and that provides a place for your hand to spin freely without getting blisters from using this all day. And this picture shows a completed dry fit chassis with the axle on the ground. Moving on to the glue phase, this is the front legs again. Uh, just glue these so that all of the pieces lay flat. Now when you go to the rear legs are a little more tricky. I suggest you start at the ends and work your way in. Uh, work the ends so that they're flat and then you line up all of the pencil marks. Then add the uprights and then finally the cross member piece. Everything should work out for you just fine. Next up is the chassis. We're going to work this in modules. First we're going to start with the corners, get those 90s because they'll be nice and flat, then work the central and the upright portions. Uh, we'll take those and I used a laser level but you could use a carpenter's square uh, to get those straight up and down. Uh, once you get that, do the same on the other side. Make sure that you do not glue the T or the cross and then you're done. And with the handle, you'll start by gluing the end cap on and then take the one and a quarter inch sleeve, place it over the one inch pipe, and do not glue this portion. This is the part that spins freely as you turn the handle, then the 90 degree and the remaining pieces. The handle and the axle are separate and the coupling gets glued to the long axle portion. We'll screw these together at a later point. One last matter before we finish with the chassis is you're going to want to sand on both ends of the chassis where the T and the cross fit together. Again, these are not going to be glued. These are only going to be screwed together after the fact so that when, you, when those parts do wear out, you can replace them. The easiest way to do this is, as I'm showing here, with a Dremel or just with sandpaper. Uh, and when you put the two ends on the cross and the T, you want to make sure that they're snug, but you can still loosen them. Uh, when you're assembling so that when you do put the axle in there you can uh, adjust them as needed and then screw them together. Now that the structure is done let's move on to the screen and axle itself. For this you'll need two buckets with the handles removed being careful not to damage the plastic ring as we use this for a guide to drill the holes for the quarter inch all thread. Once the holes are drilled through we'll remove the plastic and that'll give us access uh, into the main structure of the bucket to install the uh, washers and nuts for the quarter inch all thread. Uh, I use the uh, tin snips, but you could use a heavy gauge scissors to perform this without any problem. The next part, we're going to cut the all thread that goes through the buckets. The best way to do this is to measure the diameter of the bucket. Uh, however, you can also stick the all thread through the bucket. I'm going to cut two of these. In my instance, this was ended up being 12 and a half inches uh, in length times two pieces. And to test this, you can uh, insert the yaw thread through the bucket and make any adjustments from there. Uh, if you need to trim, go ahead and trim. It only has to be long enough to support a couple of washers and a couple of nuts. Moving on to the bucket itself, you're going to measure 7 inches from the top of the bucket and then saw it off. You can use either a handsaw or a jigsaw. In this case, I use a jigsaw. And no DIY product is complete without the whine of the power tool. Attaching the buckets to the axle itself is actually quite easy. I used the all thread, put it through the bucket top inserted the axle through the bucket and then into the frame. I'm going to use approximately a one inch space on the outfeed side from the frame to the bucket and then mark a pencil line on the axle where the all thread goes across. Uh, in order to make sure that I get the holes on opposite side of the axle, I used the paper trick again, marked the diameter, folded that in half, and then that'll give me 180 degrees opposite side of the axle for my drill marks. One additional trick that I used is to mark the lines on the axle with a screw to ensure that the drill bit does not wander. Now again on this, I'm going to drill one side, put the axle over, drill the other side to make sure that I'm dead on the holes and that the all thread goes right through the center of it. 
go ahead and set the axle and all for it aside and grab just the bucket. We'll go ahead and wrap the buckets with screen. In my case, I used half inch screen because that's the largest size that I plan on screening. Uh, I then wrapped it around the bucket and overlapped by approximately two inches, cut it, and then wrapped it back on itself about an inch to provide some structural stability to the length of the screen around the buckets. Now to hold these together temporarily to make it easier on myself, I just used a zip tie. Uh, what I did is I zip tied the two ends together and actually pulled the screen tighter together uh, than what I could with my hand. Um, this provides a little bit of leeway with where the screen can sit on the bucket. You really only need to overlap the screen onto the bucket a couple of inches, maybe three or four. Let's go ahead and secure the screen to the bucket by drilling a hole on the loose end of the screen through the bucket and then tighten that up with a one half inch number eight screw and nut. Now I'm going to repeat this three more times, approximately every 90 degrees on the bucket to ensure that the screen is held securely and this also bolsters the security um, and stability of the screen over the length of the two buckets. Now once one side is done, let's go ahead and flip the bucket around. Now this side is going to be different as the screen will go on the inside and instead of pulling it tight, you're going to spread it apart and then zip tie it again. Uh, once it's zip tied and held in place, you can then do the same process by drilling through. In my case, I drilled through the opposite side uh, so that I knew that side was not going to move uh, as I tried to expand it even further to make sure that it was a tight fit on the bucket. Uh, now this is actually the outfeed side, so as you're putting uh, screenings or dirt or composting uh, worms through this, it'll go through the plastic on the infeed side and then the mesh all the way through onto the outside. Uh, the outfeed side again has four screws just like the infeed side. Those will be secured with one half inch number eight bolts again uh, using fender washers on the inside with the head of the bolt also on the inside of the bucket so as to minimize the amount of debris caught by the bolts. Once the screen is attached to the bucket, go ahead and grab some more zip ties. Again, these are 8 inch electrical zip ties. I chose black because it's UV stabilized and should withstand uh, constant use out in the sunlight. Uh, I'm attaching to the both loose ends of the screen so that it does not have any possibility of trapping debris on the inside nor hitting the structure on the outside of the frame. Go ahead and grab the axle and all thread and this is the part where we're actually going to center the axle in the middle of the bucket and this is done by the use of lock nuts. I've got a couple of lock nuts that are threaded on the all thread and then center the axle on the length of the all thread and then a couple of more that you can see on the side of the buckets that hold the bucket in place. Uh, that's also secured with a couple of lock nuts on the exterior of the bucket. Moving on to the infeed side, I installed the all thread into the bucket and then used that as a marking tool on the axle itself. Now keep in mind the axle is below the all thread so you're going to have to move that score line back about an eighth of an inch into the bucket. Uh, to get the marks, I did the same paper trick, but instead of doing 180 degrees, I did two folds to get 90 degrees. Uh, I'm trying to align the all thread at 90 degree opposite angles so that you'll see this as uh, we go forward. Uh, once the marks are on the axle, go ahead and drill the holes and then insert the all thread through the pipe and then into the bucket. Now the easiest way to get the all thread into the bucket at this point because it's attached is just to smush the bucket down push it through. Now you can see I have lock nuts on this side as well and you can adjust those to get a snug fit. When it's all said and done as you can see the all threads at 90 degrees opposite sides and you can adjust that to get the buckets round. Now that the screen is complete, let's attach it to the chassis by sliding the handle through the cross into the axle, slugging everything up, 
both ways and then we'll attach it to the frame by screwing through the cross into the chassis and then we'll attach a couple of the two inch bolts through both sides. Um, these will be removable so that as this piece wears out you can replace it. Using the same process, drill through the axle on the handle side. Remember the axle side is glued. Install a two inch bolt and I recommend a wing nut in this application. We'll flip the unit around and do the outfeed side as well. Same process, align the T so that the axle spins freely. A hole on either side of the chassis side of the T, a couple of two inch bolts, and snug that up. To prevent the legs from falling out of the trommel, you can secure them to the framework with a couple of two inch bolts, the same as you did the axle. And now if you're going to be doing this in multiple locations, you could either use a wing nut or a much simpler way to do this would be to simply use a piece of coat wire uh, bent into a cotter key or cotter pin or an L shape and then just stick it through there once the legs are installed and then remove it when you go to store the legs. Now that the main structure is complete, let's move on to the infeed chute. Now the infeed chute is made out of a single fresh bucket that will cut twice. First we're going to cut the bottom of the bucket off and then the second cut will be along the length of the bucket. Very important, make sure that you cut just the very bottom floor off of the bucket to give you the maximum length to use for the infeed chute. Uh, and then go ahead and cut the length to give you a nice flat sheet to work with. The easiest way to do this is to thread the cut bucket up into the frame and then rotate it so that the upper right corner lines with the frame and then the top of the bucket or the rim of the bucket aligns up underneath the cross. So go ahead and draw a line on the left hand side of the bucket with a magic marker and then cut this off. This is the final piece here. One additional step to make installation easier is to cut the rim of the bucket so that we have a nice flat surface to attach to the framework. It's attached with two inch bolts again with fender washers uh, and then feed, uh, fed inside of the screen itself. Now this will have to be trimmed based on the dimensions of your screen so that the uh, all thread does not scrape the bottom of the chute as it spins. And finally moving on to the outfeed chute. This starts the same way with a fresh bucket. Bottom cut off and then sliced down the length. It's easiest to wrap it around the outside of the framework and then align it up underneath the infeed chute so that the screenings would not bypass the chute as they were screened through. The next step was easiest to take one of the lower corners, attach it to the framework. Uh, in this case, I just drilled through the bucket and then into the frame and continued through the frame. I attached that to that side with a bolt and then repeated the same thing on the opposite side. And now to adjust the infeed side, you want to make sure that you have enough of a gap so that the bolts do not hit the infeed chute and if you're going to wrap this with an additional screen that your bungee cords will not scrape this infeed side as well. One last little bit of cosmetic would be to trim off the tops of the bucket that won't be used and here's what it would look like. Here is the outfeed chute installed. I used four two inch bolts, two on each side. Now that that's installed, let's get to the demonstration.
see the screen was wrapped with 1 8 inch wire mesh. Everything larger than that came out the end of the trommel and everything smaller or at 1 8 of an inch ends up in the catch bucket. Now let's see how to remove and change the screens. The original screen is built with half inch wire mesh for stability and then smaller screens can be strapped to the outside with simple bungee cords. These were 48 inch bungee cords that I trimmed and then used a carabiner to hold them together. If you like this video and like to see more like it, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching.